welcome back to the Daily Mag Dump. I'm your host, Rick Barrett, The Arm Catholic. You can find me at thearmcatholic.com, First Class Firearm Training, with a foundation of Catholic social teaching and Catholic tradition, because the two are compatible. I want to thank the people at the Carolina Catholic Media Network for letting me hang out with them this afternoon. I hope you guys are having a great afternoon. I am, because I get to hang out with you, and I get to talk about gun stuff, and I love talking about gun stuff. So let's continue talking about gun stuff from abc7ny.com's John Paul. City of Philadelphia lawsuit against two manufacturers of supposed ghost guns. The ghosty guns, ladies and gentlemen. The most scariest of all the guns ever because they're ghosts. They're really scary because they're not um, able to be controlled by the feds. The idea of ghost guns is actually as old as the founding of this nation because guns did not have serial numbers back in the day. They were not like, ye Jacob, show me ye serial number of musket, of your smooth bore musket. No, nobody was like that. Um, they were making them in their towns. The blacksmith was making them, you or you bought them. You didn't go through a background check in the, in the day. The idea of ghost guns are as American as apple pie and baseball. But of course, because you can't serialize them and have the government track you up now, that is, you know, the worst of the worst thing. But of course, it's no, it, it's not a, a shock to somebody like myself, and maybe not to you either, to see that the city of Philadelphia, two days, because this was done July 5th, so I'm sorry, one day, soon after, how about that? Let's not put a day or even a timeline to it. Let's say very soon after the tragic shooting that took place uh, in Philadelphia with uh, the transgender or cross-dresser, however you want to label him, I don't care, uh, Mr. Carricker shot and killed a number of people saying that he was trying to end, he, she was trying to end the gun control problem in that city. Very strange story. I covered it in depth on yesterday's show. Check it out um, in my videos. So... Now, Philadelphia is going to sue ghost gun manufacturers as if it is their fault that somebody picked up their weapon and misused it. See, this is what Joe was talking about when he wants people to, or gun manufacturers to be sued for gun crimes. We're not suing car companies for drunk driving. We're not suing alcohol companies for liver disease. But we can sue gun manufacturers for gun crimes. It just doesn't compute. Philadelphia city officials announced a lawsuit on Wednesday filed against two manufacturers of ghost guns. JE, JSD supplier and Polymer 80 are named in the suit. Both advertise gun parts for sale that officials say can be purchased by anyone to make a gun. <gasps> what? You mean somebody can actually purchase something and put it together themselves? I guess there are people in Philadelphia or the city, the Philadelphia city officials are shocked that it's not made in China. You mean they actually make the things themselves? They don't go to China and make them. They make them themselves. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a little too much American ingenuity for them. Quote, the manufacturers attempted to avoid the liability by claiming it's selling parts, not guns. However, there was a recent Supreme Court decision that knocked down the pistol frame ban by the ATF. And the court ruled that weapons parts are not weapons. It's actually kind of ironic. It's not ironic because liberals will sue, 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 sue until they get their way. They have unlimited amount of resources and an unlimited amount of time. Um, so even though there is a court precedent that says weapon parts are not weapons, you have this genius, Mayor Jim Keeney, saying, oh, they're selling parts, not guns. Well, they are. According to court precedent, they are selling parts. Weapon parts are not weapons. But the gun kits they sell can be assembled in minutes by virtually anyone. They're not Legos, you moron. You actually need stuff to put them together. <laughs> they make it sound like it literally you open the box and you drop it and all the parts are there and you're just like, click, 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 click. Yay. No, it's not like that. You actually have to put the stuff together and you actually have to have uh, an IQ above lukewarm soup to do so. Anyway, the city has seen a 300% increase in the number of ghost guns used in crimes. Of course, they won't tell you, you know, zero to 30 right? Or zero to 10 or whatever the case may be. They just want to give you that inflated percentage number. Um, over the last four years. Oh, maybe they, Hey, you know what? There you go. In 2019, 95 guns were used in 2020. The number increased to 250, 2021 it doubled to 571 in 2022, 
The number of ghost guns used in crime surged to 525, uh, 75, sorry. So far in 2023, 292 have been used in crimes, including a mass shooting on Monday. Um, here's the thing. Now, I will say this. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch that ahead of time. The way they classify ghost guns is A, parts kits. B, if somebody steals a firearm and then, you know, files off the serial number, that is now categorized as a ghost gun. So they're going to make you think that 571 times somebody went to one of these parts companies and purchased these and then built these and then committed these crimes. I would bet you, I haven't seen the data, obviously, as I reported, I would bet you that in the majority, hell, the super majority of these crimes were guns with the ser with the serial number filed off of the firearm. That's what I would bet. And that they're not the polymer or the 80% the kits that are put together. Uh, Frank Vanor, the deputy commissioner of investigation, says one was an AR-15, the other was a 9 millimeter. We've confirmed through our lab both of those weapons were privately made firearms. I mean, we have, there's a story out of Maryland where um, ballistics data has actually been ruled as inadmissible in court because of the way it was done. Once again, you can check out the, uh, the videos for that story. It was one of my daily mag dumps, which is why I actually did that story because of stuff like this. <laughs> Now they're confident they were privately made, but they don't know who the manufacturer was of the firearm. That's a little strange, isn't it? We know it was privately made. Who made it? I don't know. Yeah, whatever. A little bit of a little bit of a interesting part of that narrative. The lawsuit by the city was in the works well before the mass shooting that killed five people. You sure about that? Okay. City officials said they are seeking monetary damages and injury injunctive relief. From the manufacturer. For what? If you can't even point to these companies, like you just said, we know it's privately manufactured, but we don't know who, then you can't just throw a dart at a dartboard and be like, okay, well, we're going to sue those two because, no, it's about lawsuits and it's about using this mass shooting, which they've already come out and said, we know it's privately made, and saying, okay, well, we're going to sue those two companies for it. The people in the neighborhoods in Kissing King says Kissing and across the city they don't have to they don't have the freedom to walk into the store at night because some idiot has a gun and he's out there shooting randomly. President David Council President David Clark said. Uh that's one incident. I'm pretty sure the gang violence in Philadelphia is a lot more a lot worse and contributes a lot more to people not being able to go to the the corner store to get milk. But of course, what do they do? They, and of, and of course, we hear them say, oh, well, we had the lawsuit in the works well before this, this incident on Monday. And then they reference the incident on Monday. Wouldn't you be able to reference other information if that was part of your lawsuit? No, it's not. They're using this as a scapegoat to try and actually go after these random companies because they can prove that they were privately manufactured. The first thing any good lawyer would say is, well, can you prove that my client is the gun manufacturer? No. Frivolous lawsuit. Can we have this thrown out? You better be dead to right and say, these are the companies that did it. And this is the proof we have before you start firing off frivolous lawsuits. But the left loves doing that. And they love keeping the pressure on gun companies. And they love the idea of trying to sue gun companies into the ground and trying to bankrupt them that way. And this idea of trying to hold them liable, we think that has no traction, folks. All it takes is a, a group of uh, liberal congressmen one time having both the House and the Senate to pass something through, and then ergo, you're going on from there. So that's that doesn't shock me that we're at this point, and it shouldn't shock you because these people will never give up. They will never give up, and it's, of course, not in any way connected to what happened on Monday, yet in the story, if you could see it, if you're watching online, the story has a video, and the video says, Ghost Gun Crackdown, and it has a picture of the guy from Monday shooting. You either Are you going to believe what they say, or believe what you see?